Uh, got Lester writes in from Tacoma, Washington. He goes, I drive a Ford Bronco and I drink Coors Banquet beer. Ooh, Coors Heavy. Yeah, I have those every now and again when I'm, you know, kind of, you know, kind of in a mood. You ever got have it. the Coors Banquet? It's got like the short little um, glass. Uh, I have, I have had it. Yep, I like it. Yeah. So Lester recently resigned from my employer, and I have two hundred thousand dollars in my traditional tax deferred four hundred one k. I'm struggling to determine if I can directly transfer these dollars into a Roth IRA and pay the tax. All right. Finding the answer is complicated because I also have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in a traditional tax deferred IRA that includes fifty thousand dollars of after tax contributions. If I can simply move the four hundred one k to a Roth IRA and not deal with these non-taxable bases in my traditional IRA, it'll make life simple. I hope this makes sense. If not, Joe can make fun of me. Thank you. Love the show and the humor. Lester. Oh, come on, Lester. You're my Coors Banquet beer buddy. You make fun of Lester? No, you wouldn't do that. No. Schmitty, on the other hand, probably. <laughs> well, yeah, someone that writes in over and over again. It's, it's fair game. So, all right. I, but I don't understand why, what, 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 so Lester's got, he's worried about the pro rata in aggregation rules. So he wants to convert the money, but what is, he just doesn't want to figure out what the pro rata and aggregation rules are. That's what, it's, that's, what, that's what it sounds like. So let's first answer his question. You, you yes, can, the answer is yes. Yes. You can roll the, the um, 401k into a Roth IRA. You pay tax on 200,000. End of story. You're done. But you can do that. There's a smarter way though, which is you roll it into your IRA. Now your IRA has close to a million bucks. Not quite, almost. And you got 50,000 of basis. So everything you convert, roughly 5% is tax-free. Right, at least, and ninety-five percent is taxable. But you can avoid the whole thing by just doing a, a, a conversion right from the four hundred one k to a Roth if you want to. But Lester, do you want to convert two hundred thousand dollars in one given tax year? Is my question to you. If you want to take that tax bite, then by all means, then you can do it directly from the four hundred one k to the Roth IRA. But a two hundred thousand dollar conversion is a is a pretty big number. When we're looking at a million, I mean, he's converting 20% of his retirement account in one year. So that gives us pause. That gives me a little bit of concern of saying, hey, I get that you don't want to deal with the pro rata rules and figure it out on the tax form because I guarantee you Lester does his taxes by hand via pencil, right? Yeah, or tur <laughs> TurboTax. Work. Yeah, and I and I get it because you have to do that, that form. What is it, 8505 or 8305? 86. <laughs> it's one of those. <laughs> I think you're right. 8606. It's yes. not, not that hard a form, but ne nevertheless, yeah, that is the bigger question here. Here was my thought, I guess, is if he recently uh, resigned from his employer and if he's not planning on working anymore during the year, maybe he's in a low tax bracket. Maybe it does make sense, but we'd have to know a little bit more information. And I think you brought up the key thing, Joe, which is you can do it, but should you? Right. It, it depends upon your income level and your tax bracket. Right. Because as Al said, if you roll it into your own IRA and let's say you do conversions of not 200,000, but maybe you want to do a conversion to the top of the 12 percent tax bracket. Right. So the top of the 12 percent tax bracket taxable income is roughly eighty thousand dollars. And so maybe you want to do a fifty thousand dollar conversion because your taxable income is you know, 30,000 or something like that, because you've resigned from your overall organization and you have other cash that can supply your, um, your, your, your living needs. So you do a $50,000 conversion versus a $200,000 conversion. 5% of that $50,000 is going to be tax free, right? So what is that? 2,500 bucks is tax free. The rest is going to be taxable, but it, it's, it's 50 grand. That, that's more reasonable. That's, and then you you, you convert 50000 over the next several years and get a lot of that out at a 12% tax bracket. Or maybe you want to go to the 22. But it sounds to me at 200, that's in the 24. Is 24 makes sense? But so, I mean, that's the rationale. I guess what I want Lester to do is to take a look at what tax bracket he's in today. What is the appropriate conversion amount? Is it the top of the 12? Is it the 22, the 24, whatever it is? And then look at where is he going to be in the future, right? Is he done working? 
how much money does he have in other types of income? Look at age 72, forecast this thing out. What tax bracket does he think he's going to be in when required distributions hit? Is he going to be in the same bracket, lower bracket, higher bracket? Then that's when you want to start looking at conversions at a higher number if you're going to be in a lot larger bracket in the future. But um, do the math first. Don't just try to simply say, you know what, I, I don't want to figure out the 8606 form, so I'm just going to convert the full $200,000 and pay a ton of tax. I mean, you know, I mean, an accountant will, can do your taxes, Lester, <laughs> and it's going to be a lot cheaper than all that additional tax that you might be paying. Are you prepared for retirement? Schedule a free financial assessment with an experienced financial professional right online at purefinancial.com.